but yeah mm. so maybe before we start uh while waiting for other people i would like to ask you guys some question Roland and Michael thank you so much again for coming to our day two at the uh, lightning hackathon session my name is Dea um, and Roland and Michael Bumi here is from Albi so maybe my question is that like what inspired you to create Albi like what was the story behind um, you said that Albi was was a uh, uh, you know coming from a hackathon idea as well? Maybe you guys can share the story of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll be the browser extension started as a hackathon uh, project, but uh, the idea and generally the concept um, is much older to that, and it's actually actually part of part of Bitcoin. Um, um, in the sense that uh, the, the great thing about Bitcoin is that we can transact globally, freely, peer-to-peer. -peer, um, and uh, light, the Lightning Network itself puts us on a new level, makes it you know much faster for smaller amounts and so on. And with that technology now, um, it's, it's possible to integrate that into the web natively. So the, what me excited was always on the internet that we can transfer information globally. I can read blogs, I can read tweets from everybody, I can communicate with everybody like instantly globally. Uh, but it was still very hard and it kind of still is very hard to, to transact globally, to send money in the same way. And, um, um, and also from the developer side, it is very easy to build a web application to publish it. You know, it, it's free kind of, you have all these free hostings and you have all the knowledge there. You can use HTML, JavaScript to build something, but to add actually a money component uh, to that is still very hard. And this is what um, Bitcoin and the Lightning Network solves. And where also the idea is with the Lightning, with Albi and the Lightning browser extension, to make this much, much easier and to really uh, combine this that you have like not only like information and apps um, on the web, but you can integrate quite easily money and transactions um, uh, in there. Because I also will, uh, believe that this brings an, uh, a lot new possibilities in terms of monetization for various um for, for, for whatever is actually on the internet so um and it takes away a bit of the power of like the big centralized platforms and gives more possibilities to any um like creator developer out there that wants to create something and what was the reason making a web extension instead of just like an app um the steep integration it's always about the steep integration so before you normally you know you might have an app you need to scan a qr code or you need to copy a, a an invoice from a from a website and into the app and so on and this user experience is too hard um so the idea that we follow is that you have a wallet and you deeply integrate that into an application that the transaction just becomes seamless so it can be automated. It's programmable money, and with programmable money, you know, we 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 want to have this deep integration that developers can use it in a programmatic way, and you don't need to have this this break basically between what happens in an application and what goes into the wallet. So by scanning a QR code, you know, in the digital world, and suddenly you need to take a photo of something to get it into another application. So, but we're in the digital world anyway, so that's why we can do that programmatically, and with that. Um, make it much much more usable so, and for that um, we need to teach the browser uh, to talk to the lightning network and the easiest way to do that at this point still is to do it as a browser extension yeah it's so, totally... but yeah mobile is a big topic so mobile is a big topic for us i mean we will talk about nostra wallet connect today which is also a bit the answer um, that we have like how we do this deep integrations uh, for mobile web applications, for PWAs and so on, or like also native application in general. But uh, yep, um, the, the idea is having this deep integration. All right. So since we are like, you know, this is like a good uh, introduction before we are coming into the session. Today, we are going to talk about 
uh, LBGS SDK and also Noster uh, Noster uh, Wallet, right? Noster Wallet application. So uh, yes, please go ahead, Michael and Roland, the floor is yours. Um, and yeah, uh, walk us through. Thanks, dear. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, oops, you should see my screen with the slides. Yep. Cool. So, um, yeah, we quickly go over that. You already know us, um, Roland and Bumi. And uh, we thought we'd start with a quick recap, um, actually, from what we talked about yesterday. Uh, just brought a, um, uh, three questions also. Uh, I thought just as we did that yesterday, hold on, how, like, we, we have a, we have a price for that, right? Yep. So, uh, whoever answers the question first and provides their lightning address, I, I will send 5,000 sets. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Good. Sure. Um, so yesterday we looked at, uh, at WebLN, um, and as a recap, um, so what is the first question, uh, what is, uh, sorry, what is the first function call that you need to make before you can, uh, use WebLN? So when you have a web application and WebLN is injected as a JavaScript object, uh, um, one first function call has to be made to be able to use it. So. Do you know which one that is? So be yeah, before you want to create an invoice, you might need to ask the user for permission. And um, what is the function call to do that? All those um, are also mentioned on the on the um, on the uh, WebLN guide um, there in the reference. You will see all of them, and yeah, we got some answers here. Get info is uh, tick, very close. Tick. Yeah. But you need to do something before you can request info. Request provider is actually doing it implicitly. I'm not sure if you should, if that already counts. Uh, to wait two more seconds. It would be um, webln dot uh, then enable. So before you can use it, um, you call webln enable, which prompts the user um, to um, basically allow the website to interact with the, um, with the user's lightning wallet. So, uh, this call needs to be done once. Uh, typically, uh, the wallet like Albi is remembering that decision, uh, but the web application always needs to do, to, to, uh, do this call first. And okay. There's, there's, uh, just quickly, there's a there's a question here. Checking the WebLN instance running in JavaScript. Actually, you do need to do that as well. So you have to check if the WebLN object exists in the browser, right? Um, very true. Very true. Very true. That so, is definitely helpful. As long as all the browsers do not natively support it yet, uh, there still might be or are a lot of users that do not have uh, a WebLN enabled browser. So you need to check this. Yes. Yep. I, I, I think, think that's, that definitely counts. <laughs> it deserves, yeah, deserves a reward. Please uh, write down your Lightning address. Um, I'll send you some sets. So, okay. Another one is. Um, when we talked about the LNUL spec yesterday, the LNUL spec solves one particular problem. And uh, the question here would be quickly, how many times can you pay a bold 11, like a, like a normal lightning invoice? What is the, what is the number for that? Oops. So, and the, the, Lightning, the LNURL spec 
that we talked about that yesterday, the LNOL pays back particularly um, is, um, is solving that issue kind of. And oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. It should be paid only once. Typically, it only works once. There might be some technical details to that, but uh, yep, it can be paid once. And the LNOL spec, the LNOL pay spec is actually solving that, that you can have a reusable lightning address, for example, or a reusable QR code that people can initiate a payment um, 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 yeah, from a static information, from something static. So... Um, so, um, and this solves the problem because an L, L, uh, Bold 11 invoice can only be paid once. Okay, we have one last one. Whoops. Um, a bit of more trickier one. Uh, what arguments? So we have the WebLN um, object. What arguments do you need to pass to the WebLN send payment function? When you want to initiate a payment, you pass and uh, you pass one once one one argument to it and yeah i think we already got an answer um you get the you get the invoice the payment request yes we i think we got two two answers here uh yeah that's yeah it's the payment request exactly it's the bold 11 invoice that you pass in and the pre-image because that was mentioned here the pre-image is the return value so the pre-image is the receipt that you get um, when the, the, the invoice was paid. So the pre-image basically proves that the user has paid this invoice. And uh, the pre-image is, is basically the, um, if you hash the pre-image, you get the payment hash which is in the invoice bit more technical detail, but there you can actually combine if this pre-image that you get actually matches to the to the payment request to the to the invoice. Awesome. Okay. And, cool. And just just to confirm again, the reason why you can't pay a invoice twice, right, is because the pre-image is already been used, right? A payment hash and pre-image so, can only be used once. The the payment hash is already then public exactly. Yeah. Yep. Because you have the hops in between um, and on the on the payment route, and the recipient basically yeah reveals the the pre image and it goes back. So yeah, you got a bit more technical details around it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we quickly actually did already the recap um, just to have it on a slide here again. WebLN is a set of specifications for Lightning apps and client providers to facilitate the communication between web apps and the user's Lightning wallet. So your web application can talk through WebLN, through the WebLN specification to um, the user's Lightning wallet. Um, we have talked about LNOL, which is the protocol built on top of HTTP. Um, um that yeah allows lightning clients to communicate and coordinate uh, certain tasks that are not directly included in the lightning network itself as for example the lnurl pays back which allows to facilitate payments that are initiated by the user by the sender so i want to pay to a lightning address um, to be able to pay something i need to get a um a lightning invoice a bold 11 invoice and to get this we have the lnol paste back to do a http request to get this invoice we got the lnol withdraw option that basically does the other way around if a web app wants to send some money to the um to to the user um and one thing that we want to mention today there is another one which is quite interesting actually this is the l402 spec um so this is an http level protocol to charge actually for http requests so it's a specification on how a server and a client um, as, um can communicate payment information through the http protocol itself and um, um th the interesting thing here is actually the HTTP spec was initially written end of the 90s. I think the version 1.1 was released 99 or something like that. 
And it actually already included the idea to have payments natively in the specification, in the HTTP specification. And for that, it had reserved the HTTP status 402 um, to request payments from clients. So you might know the HTTP status 404, that that's a website is not found if you enter an invalid URL or the 403, 401, which says, hey, you need to authenticate first to, to access this, um, this page. So in HTTP, we have all these, these status codes and the specification back then already said we have one status code where the server can say to access a resource, to access a website, you need to pay something. And for that, um, this HTTP status 402 um, was reserved. Uh, but until now, there was um, we had no open payment protocol to do that, and that's why here this is actually a screenshot from the specific from the specification itself. If you look that up, um, uh, the specification said this code is reserved for future use, and with the Lightning Network, with and with Bitcoin, this future is now. We kind of now have this way to uh, we have an open protocol to. Um, interact and uh, send payments on a peer-to-peer -peer basis based on an uh, on an open standard, which is quite exciting. So we actually, after I don't know twenty years now, we can um, make finally use of the status code and the L four hundred two is um, the more detailed specification on how this sh should look like. Um, we have a quick code example here uh, that we look into, but not in too much detail. Um, um, but you can look into the code there that's linked here on Replit that you can see how can how you could use that on in in your application. Um, so we could um, say we want to. Um, so what this application basically does it is requesting it's a demo application to request weather information. Um, and if I want to know the weather for for example the city of uh, Kigali here. Um, what the application is doing, it's sending an HTTP request to the server. Um, the server will respond with a 402, um, giving a payment uh, uh, request, a bold 11 invoice with it. The client requests the user to pay and does the request again. So let's see how this looks like. I have the network tab open here. If I press this button, we see we do one HTTP request down here. To the lookup, um, it's requesting, um, um, sending the city Kigali, and the server is responding here with the status code 402 payment required. You see already the the, the browser also knows this one, um, and in here we have this is the L402 specification. It gives the user a token, and at the end this is the bold 11 invoice, which the application is passing on here through WebLN to, um, to the user to pay. So I'm getting requested to pay 100 sets. And if I do that now, I paid, and now the application is doing a second request, getting a 200 status um, with actually the information. So it's partly cloudy at 26 degrees there. And in this request, we see that uh, in a header, the L402 um, header was HTTP header was added, which is this token that we got from the first request. And here we see the pre-image again. Um, this is the pre-image of the, of the payment um, as a received as a proof of payment. Um, if I look this up, I see I, did, I paid 100 sets here. And here you see the pre-image 0A2667 in the end. So this is exactly this pre-image, my receipt that I got, that proves I paid it, I send it to the server, the server can validate it, and now actually give me, give me the response. This is a bit of technical stuff, but this is quite powerful because we can really like see how deeply Lightning can be integrated on the various levels for building web applications. Um, well, I, I have a question for me. Uh, yep. When, when you pay and you get the pre-image and then you can use the pre-image when you're passing your next request, right? Uh, yeah. How many how many requests can you make with the pre-image? Is it once or uh, that's how a does very, it work? That's a very, very, very good question. Um, 
So that depends on the server how it implements it. Um, it the, the the server would still need to track how often a user was requesting this information using exactly that pre-image or using exactly that token. Um, um, because um, it could not differentiate it. Otherwise, it wouldn't know how often it has seen it already. So it depends on what you want to do. So if so, in this application, actually, so if I'm requesting the same weather again for Kigali, it will just respond with it because I sent the pre-image again and I can say I already paid for that. I already paid for the weather for Kigali and you can do it as often as, as, as you want. Um, otherwise, the server would need to, to store that. Uh, to have to have it stateful somehow. What you what you could quite easily do, um, what many are doing is in this token, which is a macaroon or a JWT token or something like that, it's something encoded. You can encode some information. So you could encode in there, for example, when this token was issued, and then on the server side, you can just look at this token and see without a database or something like that you can see that this token was issued an hour ago and it's valid for two hours, so it's still okay. But if it's, it's expired, then uh, the user has to pay again. But this is a, depends a bit on the, on the application and how the, does, uh, how the application wants to have this. It's not part of the specification. But that's great, right? Because uh, you guys as the developers can decide what you need and you can, you can exactly. have that customization, yeah. Exactly. If you have a very simple application, um, I think which this application is also doing, then you just check the token if it matches. You don't need to have a database or something like that. If you want to have a bit more flexibility, then you just store that in the database and say, okay, I've seen this, this uh, pre-image already uh, two times and it's allowed to access the resource for five times. And once it's called five times, you have to request the payment again. So this is, gives the complete flexibility. Cool. Here we have this in the slide. You can check out the code. Um, here's some spec documentation, some guides on it. Um, um, it's important that you heard about that, so you can check it out. Um, but we continue, and I pass it on to you. You want to do a quick demo of the application that we're looking into today, where we're gonna integrate uh, NASA Wallet Connect. Yeah, I'll just share my screen. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes, I can see it. Cool. Um, so this, uh, I found uh, an open source clone of the original uh, Flippy Burn. And I think we can play it quickly. Actually, before that, I might just show um, this cool tool that's um, also powered by Lightning. Um, it doesn't use L402, but it uses something very similar, and it actually could be powered by L402. Um, but it's basically a way to request um, AI functionality, um, and because AI functionality normally takes quite a lot of uh, CPU, electricity, you know, graphics card support, right? Um, it shouldn't be free. So um, what this site enables you to, to do is interact with an AI agent and uh, pay. So I, I'm going to try this GIF because I think this is pretty awesome, right? Um, AI can generate an image like an animated image for you. So um, I, I think that's quite impressive. Um, so today I'm going to say Flappy Bird, but an ostrich, uh, so a purple ostrich instead. And let's see what happens. I haven't tried this, but uh, so you'll see here that um, before the AI is going to do any computation, we have to pay. Um, and because it's through the Lightning Network, that means there's no chargebacks. Uh, for example, if you use a credit card, you could um, you could pay, but then request a chargeback. And then um, 
Pleb AI, this site, right? If they receive a chargeback, they get a fee on their side. And basically the person who requested the chargeback, um, you know, basically gets the gets the functionality for free. There's a whole bunch of problems. So with the Lightning Network, it's instant settlement. So if I pay now, uh, the site's going to receive the payment before it even starts generating the image. Um, so I'll just go here and click pay. And now the AI is working after it's received the payment. I've never tried this um, this agent before, so. To mention that it's actually pretty cool because otherwise you would need to have like big, uh, you know, you, the user need to sign up, create an account, potentially even top up a much bigger amount because you cannot charge for a few cents only. So um, um, it's it's actually pretty cool for the for the users because you can just try it and pay a few cents for whatever you're using, and it's uh, much easier than also for the developers because you just you don't need to do the, all the account management and so on. Funny GIF here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> if I go ahead and um, do another query, it's going to ask me to pay again, and this would be the difference with L four hundred two, right? You could, you can hit, you can customize your application so you can pay once and you get five queries um, using the same pre image, for example. Um, so I think that's quite quite powerful. Um, so I'll just cancel this one, um, and yeah, that's cool as well. If you want to pay, you need you need an extension that can use WebLN. Um, so that's what we're looking at today. Um, so I'll go back to the Flappy Bird demo. I'm not sure if you guys have played it before in the past, but um, I remember back in the day, I used to uh, compete with my friends. We all had it on our phone. Um, and basically, you just uh, have to jump. Uh, and this game is actually a bit buggy, uh, the original one. So I made some changes, but I'll show you that soon. Um, so basically, you don't get any score until you get through the pipes. And each time you pass a pipe, you get uh, a point, right? Um, and if you make a mistake, then cool. So my high score is 19, and then you can just restart. And you know, people compete to see if they can get um, the highest score. Um, so pretty basic. But um, I thought it would be cool to uh, power it with lightning. So each time you jump through a pipe, you actually pay. So I would like to introduce um, Zappy Bird. Uh, this time, if the first time I jump through the pipe, it's actually going to request an invoice here. Um, so in this case, it doesn't actually make sense to manually pay um, each time you make a payment, right? Because every time you jump, you have to pay again, and the user cannot click through all these prompts. And that's uh, exactly what, uh, Bumi, you mentioned at the start of this video, right? That um, we want this uh, direct integration with the website so that um, payments are seamless and they can flow just like information. So here, uh, we could set a budget, say I'll set a thousand sets, and then I can actually jump a thousand uh, a thousand times through the pipes. Um, but I won't do that today, actually. Um, I'm just going to cancel the payments, and you'll see that my score stays zero. So the idea here is that um, by paying, you prove that you actually paid, uh, played the game. And each time you pay one set, it goes into the prize pool. So one day when we get a large prize pool, uh, someone can share the photo of their um, their high score and I can send the entire prize pool sets to that person. Um, so that's kind of the idea. And actually every time you make a payment, um, I generate a unique ID and we attach that ID to the payments and that can be used. When you take a screenshot of your game, this ID, I can check and make sure that um, I actually received all these payments into this prize pool. So uh, that's basically how it works. But the cool thing is, as I mentioned, uh, normally people want to play these sorts of games. You know, it's a one button game. 
they want to play on their phone, right? They don't want to, you know, use a mouse and click, click, click. Um, it's like a game you play when you're on the train or on the bus or um, whatever. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to disable my browser extension. Um, so manage extension, uh, turn it off. So now if I go back to Zappy Bird, um, this time I don't have the extension installed and it can, the, the web app knows that because uh, there's no web LN. Uh, just, just like how we talked about in the, the question at the beginning. So um, what do we do on mobile? And we've uh, come up with this new project called uh, Bitcoin Connect, which uses Nostra Wallet Connect. And we'll talk about that later on. Um, but basically it's a way to connect to your Lightning Wallet over the Nostra network. So I'm gonna connect to using my Albi account um, and I'll set a budget of um, 1000 sets, which means that this website, Zappy Bird, has access to my wallet, but it can only access a maximum of 1000 sets. So I'll connect the wallet. You can see my balance here after I connected and now I'm connected, so I should be able to play this game. Oh, I made a mistake. The pressure's on. <laughs> so now every single time I click, I'm actually making lightning payments. Um, so this is pretty awesome, right? Um, so far, I've made 20 lightning payments, and it's almost in real time. So uh, we'll show both how, um, how the paint work and also the prize pool, because actually this is this is also powered by Nostra Wallet Connect uh, using a get balance function. Um, and it has access to the prize pool wallet, but it only has read access. So you can think of it like a, like a Bitcoin wallet, which only has uh, watch access. It doesn't have access to the the private key, it can't send your Bitcoin to a different wallet. It can only see uh, how many sats are in the wallet. So uh, now let's get back to, um, let's get back to the demo. Sorry, back to the slides. Um, so as I, as I showed before, um, the problem right is, what happens if you don't have the LB extension or what it happens if you want to uh, use lightning functionality on your mobile phone, either in a progressive web app or a native app. Um, and this is really important, especially since nowadays, most people use mobile more than computers actually. Um, so the thing here is, uh, the protocol that we use for websites to interact with a Lightning Wallet, it's just a protocol, right? Why, why does it have to just work on desktop? Um, it should be able to work everywhere. It's just a language for the web application to be able to connect uh, to a wallet, whatever type of wallet that is, or even a mobile application, how does that connect to um, one of your wallets? But the thing is that the Albi extension is actually, so what we try and do is we make the protocol simple, right? Um, so send payment, you only just pass the Bolt 11 invoice. Um, these functions are so simple and easy for uh, website developers to implement. But on the other hand, the Albi extension actually has to take on all the responsibility to make this possible, right? So um, if I go back and I re-enable the extension, I can show you this, I think. So I can add a new account, uh, connect, and you can see uh, the LB extension, the code behind the extension has to know how to connect to all these different wallets, all these different nodes. Um, and that makes it really great for the user, but the extension is quite complicated. And 
the extension currently only works when it's embedded directly into a browser on the desktop. Um, so on mobile, it's quite uh, quite difficult, right? Um, Bumi, would you would you want to add anything there? No, exactly that. So there are different ways to do um, this connections. The extension works great on, especially on the desktop browser where the extensions are available, but on other, on other devices or other scenarios, we might need something else. So, so yeah, we need another way to do, to connect to it. Yeah. Cool. So there are some, there are some partial solutions already on uh, mobile that you can try. So um, the Breeze wallet, it's a self custodial wallet. It's pretty cool. And they have kind of like an app store in, in their application itself, like you can, um, I think you can use Stacker News or um, a few other lightning powered websites and it will actually log you in. Um, and then you can, you know, browse around using your Breeze wallet. Um, but the problem is there that it's only limited to what uh, sites that Breeze has integrated with and which ones they've picked. Um, so it's not really completely free. Um, and there's also the Spring Nostra browser, which I think enables WebLN in the browser on Android. And then you can, uh, you know, browse different sites and use WebLN and Nostra, which is pretty awesome. Um, but same again, it's an integrated browser. You can't use Safari, you can't use Chrome or whatever uh, browser you normally use on your phone. Um, And as I mentioned before, the RV extension on mobile is quite difficult because we already have our existing code base and we have to make it compatible with mobile browsers. So that's Safari, um, Chrome on Firefox, Chrome, Chrome Firefox on Android, and they all have different capabilities and some, um, some things they don't support, some things they do. Um, we're working on it, but it's, it's going to take some time. And even then, extensions on mobile are not so great. They can't work in progressive web apps. Um, and I think we really want progressive web apps to feel like a native experience. Uh, so the reason there is because, especially on Apple, but even Google, I think they're, they're starting to do it, is... Google and Apple want to take cuts of every single payment. And right now it's quite unreasonable. I think it's, uh, they take a 30% cut, right? So progressive web apps are like a native app on your phone, except that it's just a website and you can save it to your home screen and open it in the full screen. It feels like a normal app. And this is kind of a way to circumvent the app store. But unfortunately, browser extensions can't work inside progressive web apps, at least on iPhone, I'm not sure about Android, uh, but either way, we need we need another solution, right? So here I said, what if users do not have to install an extension or a specific app to be able to use Lightning? What about they can just use any browser they like and just make it a lot more natural, right? Just some way for them to connect to their Lightning wallet, no matter what. Uh, what browser they use, if they're in a progressive web app or not, or even other things like from their backend, from their app that they're creating, uh, or even from a desktop app or a game anywhere. We want some sort of native solution that's easy to implement as, as the developer. So this is where Nostra comes in. Um, and for you guys who haven't tried it out yet, uh, it's pretty awesome, right? I'll just go to that point. Um, all you guys know already, you're already on this call, you know how important Bitcoin is. So I believe Nostra does the, the same thing, is just as important as Bitcoin, what Bitcoin does to money, Nostra does to information transfer. And maybe that sounds a bit uh, complicated, but um, we'll show some, we'll show a demo. I'll actually show that after we go through the slides. So I think the best way to describe it is Twitter. Every, everyone uses Twitter. I think it's 
still the most uh, popular when it comes to Bitcoiners. Uh, but there's some quite big issues with Twitter. It's centralized, it's closed source, and there's a team behind it which has absolute control over the, the accounts, over the algorithms, over what people see, over what uh, posts can be and and cannot be displayed on their platform. And even recently, right, um, with the name change, there was a user who had the X uh, username and basically Elon Musk stole it from them and said, okay, I'll give you a few stickers, right? Uh, a bit of merchandise, sorry about that. Um, so I, from my perspective, I just think that users really need a lot more uh, they need control over uh, information, just like they have control over their money with Bitcoin. Uh, and this is what Nostra tries to solve. So I might actually jump into the demo now. Um, let's see. I'm on one Nostra client at the moment, and I created a brand new account, and I don't follow anyone. So... Just think like you created a brand new Twitter account, you don't follow anyone, it's the exact same thing. But the difference here is that there's not a closed source backend, the Twitter backend where they store all users' information. Instead here, users are in control of their own information. Um, so I'm gonna do a post and we can see how it works behind the scenes. So. The first thing you can see is that um, in my network tab, I connect to a whole bunch of different relays. And what this means is that rather than just posting one to one location, whenever you post anything on Nostra, which you can think of like a tweet, um, it's going to be sent to as many relays as you connected to. And that's uh, great for decentralization if any of the relays stop working. Uh, people can read from any other relays. It's hard for you to be uh, censored. If there's a relay that doesn't like what, what you post, they can block you, but probably not every relay will. Um, and there's there's quite a few other advantages. Um, but before, before I get into that, um, let's just do a demo. So I'm going to, let's see. And I just clear everything. Um, I'm going to do a new post and say, hello, IDBC sent. And uh, in this tab, actually, probably because I cleared everything, uh, some of the relays are not going to show up. But you can see that I posted an event using um, WebSockets. And what I did is I post event of type one. So Nostra is a really simple protocol and you can post different type of events. One is like um, just a standard tweet, but there's other ones for updating your metadata and you can also create your own kinds and basically make post anything you want. It depends on the relays themselves, whether or not they will accept your event um, or, or not. But um, it's really flexible and the architecture behind it is really simple. Everything that you can post is basically just a note. So yeah, I passed, uh, I posted um, an event with, you can see the content, hello IDBC, the created time, and the kind, as I mentioned, is just a note. Um, and the interesting thing here is that Nostra is, uses the same mechanism as Bitcoin. You have a private and a public key. Um, so your public key, you can give away to people. So that's part of the event. And actually, the ID is quite mind-blowing because rather than you having a centralized server like Twitter, who you know just creates another entry in their database, and that will be the ID of the event. Here, the ID is basically a hash of all the content inside this event. And that's that's how you can broadcast the same event to all these different relays. And we know what ID it uses. And the last important thing you can see is the signature. 
and only you can set that because you have the private key uh, and it's basically calculated by signing the entire event well signing the id which is actually a hash of all the other properties in the event and that's how you come up with the signature and that's how you can prove that you are the one um who posted the note so just like not your keys not your bitcoin this is like not your keys not your notes that's what they say in nostra right boomy yep very much it's a cool. nice interesting concept so yeah okay so we'll we'll go back to the slides here Um, what Nostra also enables because of all these relays is actually you can create these little micro apps, which rather than having your own special customized backend, uh, in order to, um, you know, store, store data in a database, you can actually think of these relays as a way to post and retrieve data, like a decentralized database. Um, so I would like to go through a simple example here. Um, let's see, w3.do, which is made by a Nostra developer called Jingles. Um, and I'm going to take the URL of the video we created yesterday, and I'll put it through this um, URL shortener. And instantly, uh, what it did was it created a new type of uh, note on the Nostra network and it it broadcasted it to all these different relays that this application itself is connected to and it generated a id for the note and basically now if you visit w3.do i mean the developer they had to buy a domain name but actually the application itself can be completely client side because as long as you have this id you use the relays to look up the ID and find out what the, the URL is. So I think I just paste this link and cool. It takes me to, oh, I thought Dia, you were speaking for a second there. Um, so this is a really uh, powerful aspect of uh, Nostra. And I think if you guys are creating some apps that need a backend, you do, you might not necessarily have to create your own backend. You could look at using Nostra as um, to pro provide that functionality for you. Um, and what all this means is that the protocol itself is really simple for developers. And it's also for, for users, rather than having this closed source, you know, centralized Twitter, you have to use the Twitter app all the time. Now there's all these different apps that you can choose to use. If you don't like a specific app, then you can use another one. They all follow the same open protocol and they have different features, different UI. So I think much better ex uh, user experience for users and a lot more freedom, right? So um, I think that's really important. Uh, Bumi, would you like to add anything here? No. I think we should jump to the Nostra Wallet Connect and how we use the Nostra protocol in combination with Lightning, right? But yeah. uh, that, that's, the, that's the basis for that. It's pretty exciting what you can all do with like simple protocols and how you can then combine these different puzzle pieces. So that's, that's what the exciting thing here is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And cool. this also. Yeah, I, I forgot one one slide we can we can just show that um that Nostra uses Bitcoin as the nature native currency in applications. And one thing um that's really important and we focus on Al at Albi is uh the value for value model. Uh when someone creates uh content that you appreci appreciate, it's completely free, but you can decide whether or not you want to send them money. And with Nostra, the the amount uh, sent to creators is public, uh, unless you decide to donate privately. But uh, this is really powerful. We've seen so far, just in in the last six months, 
that over 12 Bitcoin has been sent in payment for uh, quality value that people get from um, interacting on the Nostra protocol. So um, this is really cool. Like uh, if you compare that to Twitter, people just know. They look at likes, how many likes you get, how many reposts, but you don't know how many people are actually real, how many bots are, you know, reposting, or um, if people have actually paid to employ bots to like something. Um, but with Nostra, actually, it's a lot harder to do that because everything has to be a real payment, right? Um, So anyway, let's let's get on to uh, Nostra Wallet Connect um, because this is how we enable functionality for your your application, right? So um, and the really cool thing here is that we it's very similar. It's basically the same as WebLN, but it's just using a different mechanism of uh, a different transport mechanism, basically. That's is that how you would explain it, Bumi? I would say so, yes, exactly. You have the same interface as a developer. You have the same interface, the same functions that you all know. But you don't, as a developer, you actually don't care what's behind it and what's you, it's up to the user, um, what kind of wallet they connect and how they want to connect to that. So instead of having an extension where the function like send payment directly calls the extension, um you could here say okay there is uh when a send payment function is called a message is sent through the nostra network uh, that is then received by the user's wallet and the user's wallet is executing then the, the payment and replying with a with, with a message so same interface cool. different for transport mechanism as you say yeah yeah and the, the thing here is that as we mentioned right um on the mobile side, it's different. It's difficult to implement all these different ways to connect to your wallet, right? So uh, that complexity is moved to the other side of the interaction, right? So that um, mobile app developers, they, um, they have a really simple way of um, implementing lightning functionality. And then us again as Albi, uh, we are one of the providers of a common protocol, which is part of the Nostra specification. Um, we implement ways to connect to different wallets. Um, so let's just go with the, a replica demo, I think would be the easiest way to um, explain how it works. Um, so, I think can I ask someone from from the audience again to uh, send us a lightning address? Um, Bumi, would you would you like to explain this this demo in the meantime? So this is a quick uh, demo application. Um, most simple thing uh, that you can use to check out the code, how it works, how it combines um, a few different things. And what it's doing, it is using um, LNUL Pay with the J um, as Lightning tools, as we uh, talked about it yesterday, to get a, an invoice from a Lightning address. Um, and then uses NWC um, with the, uh, an SDK there, the NWC SDK, to uh, pay that invoice. Um, so it, it's combining that and um, it shows how you can connect a client-side web application to any NWC-enabled uh, wallet. Uh, we're going to use Albi here, not the Albi extension, but the Albi account. Um, but um, it's completely interoperable and um, it's qu quite simple code. I, it's just for you also to get started, to get an idea how it works and play around with it. Cool. So um, I'll just send a payment to Snowden um, and we can see how this works. So again, just like Zappy Bird, um, 
I'm going to create a new Nostra connection, Nostra wallet connection, which actually is only used once for this individual payment, right? That we just generated using LN URL uh, behind the scenes. So um, I'm going to set a budget of 100 sats since that's exactly what I'm paying for this um, when I set, when I pay this invoice. Um, so now I can click connect wallet and cool. Yep, so we sent the 100 sats to Snowden. We've got the pre-image back as uh, proof of payment. And you can also see the, the unique connection string that we used um, to inter interact over Nostra using Nostra Wallet Connect. Um, and this connection string basically holds all the information that is needed um, to co connect to a wallet. So it holds a secret to encrypt the request. Uh, it holds the information where it needs to send this request to. Um, and that's all that is needed um, for an application to use Nostra Wallet Connect. So it's easily shareable. It's easily, uh, you can easily connect wallets to any application here. Yep. And so far we've always done a uh, user interaction, right? Whenever we make a payment, the user has to uh, be the one who initiates the payment. But with Nostra Wallet Connect, uh, you can use these connection strings in your backend. Uh, you can automate payments, um, send payments multiple times using the same connection string as long as you set enough budget. So again, I'm going to set up a payment to Snowden um, and I'll say 100 sets again. But this time I can set that I'm going to make the payment once per day. Um, so now if I click con connect, uh, continue, I have to set up this connection string just the same as before. Um, and it's the same flow as if you have Damas or Amethyst on your phone and you're using uh, Nostra there, you will connect once, uh, set up your connection string. So again, I'm making a payment of 100 sets, but th this time I can set the budget renewal to daily. And that means this connection string has access to only 100 sets from my wallet, but every day it can use 100 sets again. So I will connect this and then create the recurring payment. And now I can set I can set an email address to listen to the payment. Um, so now I get notified every single day whether or not the payment succeeded or not. So now if I just refresh the page because in the background it actually set up it executed the first recurring payment. So we can see here one successful payment, one hundred sets. Um, and tomorrow, the same time as today, it's going to send out another 100 sets, and it's also going to email me as confirmation afterwards. And if for some reason it fails to make the payment, for example, um, it's unable to retrieve an invoice from Snowden's Lightning address, then it will let me know, and it will retry in 24, time, 24 hours again. So um, this is a cool example of how you can add Nostra Wallet Connect to your backend and automate payments to your users or uh, if you receive a payment and then automate sending uh, part of the payment to someone else or splitting a payment and, you know, sending fees to different people, um, everything is possible using Nostra Wallet Connect. So let's maybe uh, check a bit at the code, right? Um, because we're already getting a bit over time. Um... Yep. Cool. So uh, should we jump straight, straight to the demo then? Code demo. Yeah, what Let's else you have there? I don't know. What I uh, just wanted to um, give a heads up on the time here. Yeah, uh, um, we are already uh, not sure how much time we still have left. <laughs> We're getting over time. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's two ways you can easily use Nostra Wallet Connect. You don't have to implement this stuff yourself. You can use our GitLab SDK, which is in JavaScript. It's a really easy way to um, make payments. And also Bitcoin Connect is a easy to use package. That's what we'll be showing today, where you just add a couple of lines of code code one single button and then you enable WebLN. So um, let's get started with the 
code session. Um, so I've commented out the payment logic at the moment. Um, and we can go to uh, this link here. Um, so I'm just going to start again. And you'll see right now, you don't get any score uh, and no payments are made. And you can also see that the price pool uh, doesn't work. So, um, and also there's no way to connect to your wallet. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, disable my extension again. Uh, and we can start looking at the code. So the first thing we want to do is enable the Bitcoin Connect button um, so that there's WebLN enabled on, on the site. So with the single line, we add the script um, to, to get the Bitcoin Connect code. And then with a few lines, uh, we just add one component, which looks like a standard HTML uh, element. Um, and if I go back to um, here, you can see that the connect wallet button now exists. Um, and I can connect the same way as before using Nostra Wallet Connect. So I'll do that now. Um, I'll set a budget of what, 100 sets and um, connect. Cool. Now I have uh, window.webln all ready to use. So um, if I if I look here, window.webln, um, it actually uses my Nostra Wallet Connect connection in the background, but it completely follows the WebLN protocol um, as a provider of WebLN. And this button itself actually already calls webln.enable, so it's already ready to go for us to use. Um, so now if we just look at uh, a few different things, um, we can, first we can display the price pool. So you can see here price pool loading. Um, that's that's what, what we want to do. And as I said before, um, we're actually requesting balance from an Albi wallet. Uh, and I have, uh, I'll just step through these lines so you can see what's going on. Um, I have this hard-coded uh, Nostra Wallet Connect URL, right? Uh, but when I set up the Nostra Wallet Connect connection, I only enabled the balance permission. So it doesn't matter who has access to this, um, but please do be very careful if you create your own Connect URL uh, what budgets you set, uh, what permissions, because if it gets leaked out, someone someone could drain your wallet if you don't set the right permissions. Um, just like the Albi extension, if you set a budget too high and you're using in, uh, some sort of app that al allows you to send a lot of sets, you have to be careful in the same way. It's up to the, the user to take responsibility there, uh, but you have complete control. So now... Uh, Let's just uh, step through the code and see what it's actually doing. Um, so we are creating a WebLN provider, right? So it will have full access to the WebLN protocol, at least what uh, what functions this specific provider implements. And we pass it the connection string that only has um, the ability to read a balance. And then as before, we call WebLN so you can think of this as actually a WebLN object. It's called NWC here, but it can be called uh, WebLN, WebLN, right? Um, but the first thing we do is call enable again, but it's a bit different here. What's going on is actually connecting to a relay, a Nostra relay, so that it can request lightning functionality. And then just as before, we do a WebLN method, get balance and we can update the price pool balance and then close the connection because we don't need it anymore. So, um, cool. Now I got uh, the balance successfully from the wallet. Um, 
So the final thing we want to do is uh, payments. So if we just go here, um, and we can step through the lines one at a time. So what happens, we have this pay function, which is executed every time when you jump. And it's only executed actually when you start when you enter the pipes, as I mentioned before, otherwise you don't get any score. So uh, if we step through the lines, the first thing we need to do is create an invoice so that we can actually pay something. And this is using LN URL. Um, so I already set um, a lightning address, right? So if I go to, yeah, I, I set up a specific, a new LB account specifically for this. And that's how I have this uh, prize pool. So. In this LB account, it has um, some sets available. I created the Nostra Wallet connect connection using that account with only a read, um, read balance permission. But I also have the Lightning address so I can send payments to that account. Um, and that is interesting thing here with um, when you make a payment, uh, when you make an invoice, you can also, other than setting them out, you can set... Um, information to attach uh, either when when using the LNURL spec, it's actually not embedded into the Boulder 11 invoice, but it will be stored uh, separately and linked to the invoice uh, on, on your LV account. So what I'm doing here, as I mentioned before, is I'm, I generate a unique ID. And when you make payments, this is how you can prove that you actually um, paid when you're playing the game. So I've created the invoice now, and then using the exact same code as you would use if you had the LB extension installed on a desktop, window.webln, the same protocol. This is really simple for uh, website developers, right? They only have one object they need to deal with um, in order to access lightning functionality. So I just send the payment. And I also check if the pre-image doesn't, if the result didn't receive a valid uh, receipt of the payment, I I think that the, the payment failed. I can assume that um, and an error will be thrown so that this um, next code further down won't execute. But if the payment's fine, then I will increase the score, um, which will be shown at the very end when you, when you die, right? And I also, just for fun, I made it like a purple uh, Nostra lightning strike. So um, that's basically it. Uh, Bumi, do you have any questions or, or comments there? Uh, maybe we can ask the audience as well um, if you have any any questions. Yeah, exactly. If somebody has a question, let's do it, let's share it. Maybe I was thinking, um, can you, not sure if that may, makes sense, but um, if we go through the, each of these steps, I thought maybe you can add a, can you add a console log statement that we see, for example, the invoice, um, the payment request in the log and the pre-image in, in, in the log while we are playing uh, the games to see what's happening in the background there. Yep. So, um, yeah. so I'll log it. I'll after log the it. first step, we get the invoice. So we lock that one. And then we lock the pre image after the payment. Oh, um, exactly. so I just but, I'll put them side by side. Um, and maybe just restart. Okay. Oh. So you can see all the invoices I'm paying, right? And I get the the pre-image back for proof of payment. Exactly, nice. You see us, how fast it is. You get the invoice. Next thing is directly the pre-image. And in the background, the invoice is sent to the wallet through the Nostra Relay in an encrypted message. Uh, and it pays the invoice and responds with the pre-image. Yeah. I think this is always super powerful and it's exciting to see how, you know, like in a few minutes you add all these functionality to any web application. Um, 
you don't need to apply for a card processing company or something like that or get accounts and whatnot uh, it's a bunch of lines of code and now you can really like uh, orchestrate payment flows in in, in a client side applica uh, web application um this is nice cool. What do you think, like, what is the hardest part? Do you have a thought? What is the hardest part? Is there a hard part uh, when you add, when you try to add lightning uh, to, to an application? I think, uh, the hardest part was making this button. So now that people can use it, it's pretty easy, right? Just a couple of lines. Um, Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Um, what what do I think? I think the hardest thing is passing metadata. So, um, when you when you request an invoice, you have to consider, uh, you know, on in this app, it's just a client side app. Um, but you have to think if if you want to somehow uh, track the payment, um, and if you need some unique identifier attached to it in order to execute some functionality. I think it, uh, it depends on what sort of app you're trying to do, uh, what you need, right? Um, what, what do you think, uh, Bumi? One thing that uh, comes to my mind maybe is um, um, as in many applications, error handling needs to be uh, considered carefully. So yep. to see, okay, because the, the, you have a, um, you're not relying on one particular um, API, but your application is connecting to different Lightning nodes that are, might be run by different people. It might be run by a company, but it also might be run by just an individual where the server, for example, might be slow in responding or the server might be down. Um, because it's just the uh, individual's lightning address running on the home server, for example, or also the Nostra wallet connecting is the same thing you do. You have a bit of the complexity in in terms of um, error handling. Not all the Nostra wallet connect or not all the wallets might be as fast as the one that you had here because it might be like on an old computer running at home through a slow internet connection or something like that so these things if you go on scale these things might become a bit more complicated uh, to to consider um, yeah that you have yeah. decent error handling and that tells the user um what is going on or when, what went wrong we see this in some of the um Nostra clients, um, they obviously to be you focus on the happy path, but if something goes wrong, they do not give information to the user, not an error message or something like that. So this is something that I think um, if you go, if you publish it and if you go on scale, this is something that needs to be um, um, yeah, carefully taken care of. Yeah, we, we can actually test that quickly, right? So I'm going to connect this time and pass an existing connection string. But this one actually only has uh, ability to read um, from my mm -hmm. wallet. Well, from the price pool. Um, so when it tries to pay, it's gonna it's gonna fail. Um, so if I if I open up the um, the console again, let's see what happens. And I probably didn't add good error handling, right? So uh, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Um, but I do just log to the console and I won't increase the score. But that's something that, um, as Bumi said, you have to be very, uh, very careful with, um, yeah, error handling and making sure that, uh, people can't, um, yeah, abuse your system or somehow drain sets from other, other users, um, who, who connect to your site. So. Um, you're dealing with real money, right? So uh, you have to yeah. be you have to be a bit careful. Yeah, this is definitely also something to add. You're dealing with real money. Uh, you're dealing with uh, real money in a, like a decentralized network, um, uh, which means at least at this point there are less uh, um, safeguards or whatever. You have to take care of the safeguards yourself. 
um, because once the SATs are sent, they are gone. Uh, you cannot go to a bank and say, I want the money back. That's the advantage. It's a finite settlement. That's the amazing yeah. part of it. Um, but at the same time, this also comes with the responsibility to be careful um, what you do. Very, don't share the connection strings. Don't share your keys. Uh, uh, th these kind of things. There you have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's a bit philosophical, right? But that's what Bitcoin teaches you that what I believe is the world would be a better place if people took more responsibility, right? Not, you know, asking the bank to give you, give me a refund, you know, actually take care of your own money, take care of your own keys. Um, um, and don't pass on this responsibility to people who can abuse it. Yeah. You give away the power also in that sense. Yeah. 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 But also don't be scared. I mean, these things, there is a lot of development happening, you know, uh, like for example, even if you look at Nostra Wallet Connect initially, Nostra Wallet Connect was for sending payments. Initially, the Nostra Wallet Connect application did not have a feature like budget as you showed it. So there the risk was bigger. So like by time we all build these kind of tools to um, deal with um, these risks and these complexities. So now um, there is this budget feature that, that you should always enable. So then you are kind of uh, safe if you leak the connection string, it can only use whatever you set in the budget and you can always revoke um these um these connection strings so that's uh, quite simple and there will be more more tools for that um so don't be scared of it just be careful and just be aware that you're dealing with with real money and you're sending real and receiving real money so. yeah cool so um i think that's all right for me so if anyone has any questions or wants to contact us if you have any follow-up questions uh please Send them on Telegram. Uh, thanks very much for your time. I hope you enjoy using Nostra Wallet Connect and building awesome apps for the hackathon. So I think I'm going to be one of the judges there. Um, so I'll look forward to seeing uh, what apps people come up with. And yeah, as I said, if you yeah. need any help, just, just let us know. And check out the code, right? We share the, the links. Um, if you have to... Uh, the Sappy Bird application. We have the small um, NWC demo application uh, where we can look at the code, play it around it, fork it, uh, see what what change some things, what work, what don't work. And yeah, just to emphasize again, if you have questions or if you run into problems, don't hesitate. Just uh, um, share the error messages, share the questions. Uh, it's also great for us to to learn how we uh, can improve certain things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roland and Michael, for such a, another amazing session. Like so much information, I'm sure that will be very helpful for you guys to create this application. And, and uh, yeah, don't forget to join the Discord channel. So I think, uh, you know, I will also add Roland there if anyone also wants to have questions. You know, you can post on the channel question. You guys can team up in there. Uh, also, check out our resources and, um, uh, channel for announcement for anything related to the hackathon um thank you again thank you so much i'll be for uh all your knowledge and and all of your uh sharing for us really appreciate it and yeah uh, i will see you again uh roland for the judging day so uh good luck for everyone uh i'll see you guys next time and you know make a really cool app okay thanks dear. thank you so much Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thanks for everybody joining. Awesome. Bye-bye. Well, see you later. Bye.